Good evening and welcome to Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And I'm Pyrosim. And we're pre-recording slightly later than usual. Not that it matters to any of you. Yeah, because... none of you will notice. Or <laughs> Suffice to say, we were trying to get Pix caught up in Mass Effect. She had a busy week. Had. Have. Right. These or, are just concepts. Whereas some of us were just like, six-hour sessions of Mass Effect all day long. Mass Effect is a pretty long game, it turns out. Yeah, really. Do um, all those side quests? Kind of a big deal. Our, our um, discussion up us. until Priority Far Rim, I think, goes along these lines. Man, the Quarians are really dumb. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I asked you guys before the last game not to go start in a war, and you did. And not and only then, did you start a war, you took all of your civilians to... with you. Right. This is the dumbest idea ever. Hey, we're gonna go fight a war. By the way, get those buses full of civilians in here. And then when I, Commander then... Shepard, who have saved your lives numerous times, are like, I have strategic information that you don't, you should pull back. They're like, nah, we're just gonna go in. And then, while I'm standing on this enemy ship, you're like, hey, let's blow it up. And I'm like, Let's murder hey. Commander Shepard, because that won't work out badly with the Reapers coming or anything. The galaxy will thank us for this. <laughs> and then it's like, not only am I on here, somebody from a prominent position on your seat of government is also here. Yep. Please don't blow me up. One of your five government officials who decides what your entire surviving species is going to do, is with us, and you're shooting at her. Brilliant. So, yeah, I totally punched that guy. I, I, I like, punched that guy, too. Yeah, uh, that is one of the few renegade decisions that I could not turn down. That and, you know, putting yeah, a bullet in the Yeah, he was all like, oh, sh the, the situation parameters changed. You're military, you know that, right? And I was like, dude, nope. you shot me! GTFO! Oh, also, that noise shit. was my impersonation of a Corian getting punched in the gut. <laughs> Admitted, the blow is softened because of the suit, but I'm sure he still felt it in his uh, Corian abdomen. I bet they get squishy being in those suits all the time. They're not prepared to take punches. You know, oddly enough, you never meet a fat Corian in the game. They wouldn't be able to fit in the suit. <laughs> yeah, that's a hell of a motivator! <laughs> If you get too fat, you don't get to breathe anymore. You get too fat, you get to be a Volus. <laughs> That's what Volus actually are. They're just fat Corians. Nobody told fat, them. short Corians. It's like, hey guys, we'll tell them we're a separate species. Aren't we? Aren't we? <laughs> That's why they're gasping all the time. Is It's not that they, they <laughs> breathe some other gases, it's just that they're short on breath because they're, they're, they're so fat. They're just fat and they've been walking. Nice. I guess that's pretty much all we have to say about Mass Effect. Well, I... We can make some more comments. I mean, like, we we can't discuss the ending itself, but I, I can say as someone who has now finished the game, I understand a few things that people are upset about, but I think they're taking it way too far. In general, I liked the ending a lot. I thought it was pretty good. I would have liked to have a few more options and a few more diverse endings, but I, I have I, no complaint about what the endings I, were. I, I, can, I can say, and I don't think this spoils anything, that I thought the DLC message at the end of the game was bullshit. The, you finished your journeys with Commander Shepard, but if you want more stories, download and enjoy our DLC. Excuse me, I have to be told that DLC is a thing now? I don't remember seeing that message. It, it's there. Huh. It, it's after the credits, but it's there. That bothered me. Well, having it all the way after the credits, I guess I'm more okay with it. If it was right after the final cutscene, then that would be okay, more that, egregious. That would have been unacceptable. But you, you've had your emotional unwinding by the time the credits have played out. So, eh. Except in certain endings, where there is also other after the credits. Right. And those are the, the really, really good endings, which are the ones that a first-time playthrough is not likely to get to. 
I got it. I Because of my previous saves of Mass Effect, and because of my playing of the multiplayer, I got the best ending for the choice that I made on the first playthrough. Yeah. There's something that I can say that I would have liked as an additional ending without spoiling anything is there should have been an option at the very ending to just, like, side with the Reapers. I mean... <laughs> I, to just throw away the entire franchise and go, you know what, I'm with you guys, let's go. Well, that, that it's almost sort of a reasonable thing based on the context of the ending. I mean, you have... I suppose, you should be we'll, able we'll to make to a lot future. of choices at that juncture. Yeah, rather than the three stage that you get. But the content creators had to choose a certain number of endings to, to finish the game with. Yeah. And so they picked three that work. I mean, there there are infinite ways you could have potentially ended this thing, and they just picked three that were acceptable because those told the story they wanted. There is a point where the customizability... And the variability of your story needs to stop so the storytellers can end the game. And that's what I think a lot of people aren't getting. Yeah. And there are a lot of endings that are not available that I might have chosen. I I'm going to go ahead and throw out a, a small spoiler in that in every single ending, no matter what your readiness is or what your choices are, all of the mass relays get destroyed, and I think I would have potentially chosen a lot of things that if they had saved the mass relays. Like, I, I, I would let a lot of people die in exchange for keeping the mass relays around. Right. And, and lucky you gave the spoiler warning, because Pixie just flung her headphones off at top speed. <laughs> Which would have been comical if we were doing video, but technical difficulties are causing that to be not an option. Right. Are you done with that? Yep. <laughs> no, you, you can't listen right now. Oh, nope, okay. I'm done. That's all I had okay. to say. I, I can't really discuss it, because she would hear the things that would be coming out of my mouth, but I, I do see where you're coming from on that. And we will be sure to discuss the endings when Pixie actually makes it through the game. But for now, it it's probably best to discuss, if nothing else, simply some of the other aspects of the game rather than the story. So we can talk more about multiplayer. Um, specifically, a bug that Pixie found that that is acceptable to discuss. So, Pixie, I'm going to return your headset. What did you want me to talk about now? We're, we're going to talk about that little exploit that you and your friends oh, discovered. Oh, the glitch. Glitch, exploit. Um. Oh, no, it's exploiting a glitch, but it's... It's called an exploit for a reason. Yes. Uh, so I got into a random queue on Silver Difficulty. And... Stepping it up. Yeah. Which is usually a bad idea because I find the people on there are tools, but... This turned out in my favor. Silver and gold seems to be where the tools just hide. Bronze is like the, we're just playing the game. You also get noobs there, though. I can live with a noob. I can watch a noob die as I complete the objectives and finish the map. What I can't deal with is the guy who's screaming into his mic at the top of his lungs because he blindly ran in and died, and I'm not willing to blindly run out and try to resurrect him. Mm. Anyway... So, I'm not sure if I should be talking about this. You should, because it's probably already on the Mass Effect boards. Um. Besides, who really listens to Nerd Talk? I'm sorry, if Bioware listens to us and discovers this exploit, one, I want full credit. <laughs> Wait, you want credit for something that I did? I want credit as Nerd Talk that we, we discovered and reported this bug. And two... Holy crap, Bioware listens to us. Like, really? Really? That would be finding out that Riot Games listens to us because we occasionally talk League. That's half our listener base right there, is we occasionally talk about League. Right, that's like six people. All of them. Anyway. 
So we ran into this, uh, the, I, I, I jumped on this lobby and the, the guy prefaces it. First, I would like to, I would like to preface the story with, I'm wearing my mic. I'm, I'm ready to be a helper. One of the few lady folks that actually uses her mic on Xbox Live, not fearing ridicule. No, I fear it. I just don't know what to do when it actually happens. Right Case up. in point. As soon as I get into this lobby, this gruff male voice says, So, Pixie, how'd you like to make a lot of money? <laughs> Never quite a phrase you want to hear when signing into Xbox Live. <laughs> and I went, I'm sorry, I don't think I understand you. Could you try that again? <laughs> do, do I need to find an adult? <laughs> Basically was what I was getting at there. Well, that's a situation <laughs> where you just reach up to your headset and fold your mic up to the earpiece. Let it auto-mute. <laughs> right. But, um... No, actually, I, I, I was like... I don't understand what you're talking about. Please elaborate. And he was like, hey, we're going to exploit this glitch. Would you like to join us? And I'm like, eh, sure. What all does this involve? He's like, well, we're going to make a butt ton of credits this way. Well, first you send me your Xbox Live user account name. And, and then password. you send me the password. <laughs> and your credit card <laughs> number and CCV2 code. Right. And, and then your social security numbers. It, this is all for a prince and in Nigeria, mind you. Just for good measure. Because the Prince of Nigeria needs those for his money to go through. It's, it's like some kind of, like, check voucher or something. Yup. That, that, that's the only acceptable form of identification. Yup. <laughs> Naked photos and your social security number. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Man, just crashing this thing off topic. You are just, like, way out there. It's one of those days. So then... We go, he goes to explain this the way this glitch works. Um, basically, I was not on the, like... I, w I was not party leader at any point during this, so I'm sure more went into this than what I probably understood. But what I got out of it was we created a group. We went into a match on gold level difficulty, because you get better bonuses. Because for... that's the, the top of the money. Mm hmm And, um... As soon as it starts up, the hosting player leaps. But you have to, like, you get, get in, like, an Xbox Live party first. Hosting player leaps the match, yep. not the party. Leaves the game. And so while it's loading or whatever, it'll reload that wave. But there's a bug going on right now where instead of reloading wave one, it'll reload you at wave ten. Right. Then you just invite the guy back in and... Say, uh, what we had been doing was we all went as infiltrators and only carried one pistol. That way we had maximum power recharge time and we would turn invisible and use the missile weapons to basically clear out enough for us to get those, like... The tenth wave objective the done. Objectives. Yeah. That's the way I played the done. whole campaign. <laughs> Push the buttons and then... Um, actually, once we got all those objectives done, we collected the bonus money from that and then just yep. let it, the, the party wipe. Yep, you can and do then, that. Uh, we collected the money. For if you do not care to finish the map, it, it's only an extra fifteen hundred, or no, fifteen thousand, for getting a full extraction versus a partial or a failed extraction. And so we just let the party wipe after that, and we can just keep doing that. Right. And get a preposterous amount of in-game credits. Enough for several fun. Spectre level kits. Which. Still didn't get me the item I wanted. <laughs> the Asari Vanguard? No, I had that ages ago. I'm talking about the Black Widow sniper rifle. Oh, well, that's kind of a rare. It is a rare. Alright then. That's the point, is I was going for the Spectre Packs. The Black Widow sniper rifle is kind of not very good in single player. It's... I... But Bala in multiplayer! No, the, the Widow is garbage. The Black Widow is amazing. The it, difference is the Widow is a one-shot weapon. The Black Widow has, like, five. Uh-huh. But the when I was using the Black Widow in single player, it wasn't one-shotting my enemies. Yes, it had more shots in its clip, but I had to fire several times to kill a guy. and That's, that's weird, because I thought the Black Widow was the highest next to the Javelin. The weapon I was using throughout most of the single player campaign was the sniper rifle you get as soon as you put all of your skill points into 
the sniper rifle skill. As soon as you max out that tree, it unlocks a sniper rifle, and that one was better than any other one I was able to find during the campaign. I didn't realize there were weapons associated with maxing out skills. I, I didn't realize it either, but from we importing go, Black my Widow. save game from 2, Black, I... Black Widow is available from Spectre Requisitions. Um, it's very heavy. Yeah, it's... It is very heavy, which is also the downside because the vast majority of what I did in the single player was carry almost zero encumbrance and use my powers for all of the actual mission. I've tactics. actually been finding myself doing that more. I usually play a soldier, and so for a while, I was taking every gun possible for every situation. But because of that, I like to use my adrenaline rush ability, and I would trigger it, and the next one I could do was, like, 20 seconds away. Yeah, the encumbrance is new to Mass Effect 3, and it's kind of cool, but it also seems kind of imbalanced, because I think, I think the best thing in every situation is to have uh, zero encumbrance, or however much encumbrance you get that you still have 200% power recharge. Well, that's not necessarily true, because playing as a soldier, the most important thing for me is having the right guns for any job, and having the right ammunition to go with it. Ammo uh -huh. doesn't trigger the cooldown at all. The only thing that does is triggering my adrenaline rush. Uh-huh. So, it, it's sometimes worth it, playing as the soldier, to have a shotgun, an assault rifle, and a sniper rifle on the same character. Uh-huh. Lately, though, I've just been running with my assault rifle and my pistol so that I can use adrenaline rush as much as possible to just kill the low-end enemies. Right, and you're using the soldier, which theoretically should be the class that is most willing to trade encumbrance for power recharge. Right. And if you were any other class then weapons would be way less oh, important. Yeah. No, if, I'm, if so... I'm playing as a vanguard or a, a sentry, my powers are top priority. They're going to do more damage than the guns. Especially the vanguard, you want to rush as much as possible. The biotic charge is just too good to pass up. Yeah, so the encumbrance system seems a little weighted towards not bringing any guns almost ever. Right. But I guess that's an interesting trade-off. Something I actually kind of want to see, um, watching Pixie play as her vanguard, she basically just kind of bounces from target to target using biotic charge, almost never stopping, because the cooldown rate is so low that by the time she hits something and does one other thing, be it a melee attack or a shotgun shell, she is able to jump again. I would like to see a real-time video of what that would look like. From an overhead camera perspective of, like, the whole map. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm just all over picturing, the place. like, pinball hell between the enemies. That's the biotic the... charge ability has a really long range, and it moves almost instantaneously, so... Well, it also slows down time when it does it. Like, potentially, the speed of light is being violated in the game universe. <laughs> yep. Did you guys ever get your multiplayer pre-made matches working? Because I, I know before you weren't able to join matches with each other. Uh, we still have not been able to manage it. Admitted we didn't try much this week, but... That seems kind of sucky. Yeah. Pix apparently managed to get invited by a friend this past uh, week. Last night. Okay. I did that yesterday. So, hopefully it's working better. We're going to try this later today, provided we're still up for it when I get back. Right. So if that's all about Mass Effect 3, yep. Age of Empires Online came out last night, and Woo. I have been playing it a bunch today. It's cool. free to play. Sweet. And it's pretty good. I like it a lot. Uh, Age of Empires was my first real-time strategy game, the original Age of Empires way back in the day. And this one purports to be a massively multiplayer real-time strategy game, but from what I've been able to discern, it is basically a single-player real-time strategy game with an IRC chat box in the corner where people are like, I can't beat this mission, help. Except nobody is like that because all the missions are kind of really easy. If It seems like this is a game if you're more inclined to goof around in a real-time strategy game and play with it like a dollhouse than play it competitively like StarCraft II on ladder. Uh... Age of Empires Online would be good for that. The campaign 
has a very long, very slow tutorial section where they're like, the first mission is like, you have you have a couple of soldiers, go kill some bandits. And then the second mission is, you have a couple of peasants, go get some food from these bushes. And then it's, the third mission is like, build a house so you have more population. It, it introduces mechanics really slowly, so that if you've never played real-time strategy games online before, or real-time strategy games at all before, this would be a good place to start. Um, it has basically the same mechanics as the old Age of Empires games, down to uh, guard towers can't shoot at zero range. They have to shoot things that are slightly further away, and you hunt wolves and deer for food, and there's bushes for resources, food, stone, gold, and wood. Um, and if you're into Duran Duran references, if you mouse over the wolves, it says, this wolf is hungry like the wolf in the tooltip. Nice. So, free to play. I, I'd say if you've never played real-time strategy games before, this would be a very good one to get into, because it's free and it's easy, and you have the chat box if you need help. Good. Cool. It has I, some free-to-play monetization things that well, yeah. it is impossible to earn with in-game currency, which I, I sort of dislike. I am big into the free-to-play model, and obviously it's made a lot of money for Riot and for Team Fortress 2. But hats, man. I, 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 I feel hats. that free-to-play monetization systems are absolutely best if, uh, say, 14-year-olds who don't have credit cards but have tons of free time can get all of the premium value by just sinking hundreds of hours into the game. And then 30-year-olds who have money to burn but no time can can trade their money for skipping ahead a bit. Oh, there, There's no way to earn the premium stuff in Age of Empires Online with, with play currency, but the premium stuff also seems completely unnecessary. No, oh, not a big deal. Right. No, I I enjoy the free-to-play model, too. I, I think it rewards companies for the work that they're doing rather than the work that they did. And, and right. I'm, I'm a big proponent of that. Um, I love that I can decide, you know, it's been a while since I supported Riot, and they released a cool new champ that I like. Here, here's some money for that champ. Be awesome. Keep being awesome. You know, I I like when they do special events that make me want to buy more of their stuff because it shows they're putting in effort. When they buff or nerf champs that make me happy to be playing the game. Basically, knowing that the company is still actively doing things with it. I mean, Bioware can promise all day long that they're making new Mass Effect DLC, but until it actually comes out, I have no clue if they should be earning my money for anything besides the initial Other game than the game that you bought, you mean? Yeah, they already got that money. That That's done. But I, I have no clue that they're even planning on doing anything else that they care. But with the free-to-play model, they they have to. Mm-hmm. If Riot all takes a vacation and doesn't put out anything for a month, that's a lot of money that they lost. And mm-hmm. a lot of content that I, as a player, did not get. Mm-hmm. So it, it's a constant motivation to keep making the things I like. So that I can keep paying for the things I like. So this is a games for Windows Live game, which means it has that. gamer score points. Right. And I don't know how many it has. I I I think I've earned fifteen so far, but arbitrary Dylan. numbers. Dylan. Dylan. Yes. They 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 the games typically have a thousand. You refer to completing a game as thousand pointing it. Retail games typically have a thousand. XBLA games used to have two hundred, but they recently bumped the XBLA uh, points amount to four hundred. I have no idea. And so, this is not a sixty dollar retail game, so I don't know if it gets the full thousand or if it gets the two hundred or the four hundred. Apparently, there are places online where you can just look up all the achievements attached to a game. Uh, looks like it's a four hundred. I'd say from just my quick mental math. Uh, yeah, but you're, and... you're an English major, so I don't trust that math. Hey, I'm pretty close according to Pyro here. 
330 can be earned without paying any money. Right. So, hey, 330 gamer score points without paying any money. If you're into that sort of thing. I really like gamer score. I I wish Steam had gamer score. I think it's neat. I don't quite understand. I the, just wish like, they had a court. universal that like they used to have a universal point level so you can tell basically by looking at somebody's gamer score about how many games they've finished. Uh-huh. Right. Well, it's even back when there was only one level of points in a game that it would vary widely how much how many how many of those points players had gotten for any given game, even games that they completely played through. Because yeah, achievements but... vary in difficulty. Yeah, but it gives, you a, it gives you a general idea, and then you can look into the specifics of it. I got super freaked out when I got your friend request. Yeah, sh she sent me a text saying, since when did you get an Xbox? <laughs> yeah, I, I was kind of on the same level, just like, Pyro would never own an Xbox. Oh no, anti-Pyro exists. We have to go to New Mexico and kill it. Well, one of the other things I did after I played, like, three hours of Age of Empires Online is I was playing with the Xbox Live avatar creator on the Xbox.com website. Because they have uh, avatar tools that are not as good as the ones on the console, but they're good enough as uh, customizing my avatar. You could do that. <laughs> the avatars are really cool. I like avatars. Yeah, they're, they're kind of neat. I have one that uh, totally looks like me in a sweet hat. I'm not quite happy with mine yet, but getting there. I had someone who, like, uses character creation as more of a game than the game itself. You mean Luca. Yeah, Luca, <laughs> Luca will start playing a game just to use the character creator and then be uh, make something she likes and then be like, I'm done. Yeah. But this is just one of the things she does. If I ever had, pick had up... Had a ball with Rift. If I, I ever pick up a new MMO, she's like, I need to play with the character creation. Even Star Wars she spent time with. Like, no interest whatsoever in the Star Wars universe or the game itself. Just wanted to play with the character creator. The Avatar Marketplace is another place where I'd really like to see some ability to purchase uh, Avatar items with in-universe currency. Even better, I would like to see some ability to get avatar items with gamer score, because that would be awesome. I I would really like grind for achievements, get hats. Yeah, it's perfect. I think just playing certain games should unlock avatar features that they shouldn't charge for them. You know, I played Mass Effect, therefore my character should be able to hold the uh, Avenger rifle. I like the idea of. Them being available for money, but also being earnable if you spend some time earning them. Yeah. Because that's... It should be a part of the fee that you pay to buy the game that, hey, for buying this game, you get these things for your avatar. It's almost better to have them not available all up front and you earn them without paying any money. It's better to have that than even if they were just all readily available. Because if you started with this giant library of items, you wouldn't really have time to go through them all. But as you earn them, you're like, hey, I accomplished something, I earned this reward. And you get to look at it and really consider it in the one moment without having a billion of them to go through. And right. You're more like, familiar with all your avatar items. Like, for instance, Pix, I think your avatar is currently wearing an N7 hoodie on, uh, on the 360. Pix. Hmm. Huh? Your avatar currently wears the N7 hoodie? Uh, t-shirt. T-shirt? Yeah, no, my shepherd wears the hoodie. And you got that for buying the collector's edition, correct? I can't remember, actually. I think I had it from, like, extra points I had laying around when I had bought Mass Effect 2. Okay, so you actually bought that with points online. But, like, how cool would it be if, yeah, you finished Mass Effect 3, so now your avatar character... I did get a avatar prop for getting the collector's edition. I okay. got a little, like, Norman DSR2 ship. All right, but yeah, how cool would it be if for finishing Mass Effect 3 and playing through all three of the games, you know, showing a lot of loyalty to Bioware. Since these are the only games on my 360 console. Right. If it was like, hey, you finished Mass Effect 3 by importing a save through all three games, your avatar gets a an N7 hoodie that they can wear as a gift from Bioware. 
You gotta be careful about wearing an N7 hoodie, because you might get shot. Oh, political podcast! Oh. Also, <laughs> it's N7, so you might get shot anyway, because that's a military organization. Yes. But, yeah, you, you could have, like, some items that you unlock by beating the game, other items that you get by beating the game with an imported save, and even more items that you get by S-ranking the game. It'd be great. Yep. It'd, it'd be more incentive to get achievements than just points that don't do anything. Exactly. You know, I can look at my gamer score all day. I think it's like 13,000. Doesn't mean a, a thing. But if you get to play dress up, then hey, dollies. Yeah. If, if it means that people can look at my avatar when they like see me come online and be like, hey, he's got that. That means he finished this thing. Well, the other thing there's not a lot of is opportunity to show your avatar to people. I, I would want, like, a game, even if it's just PlayStation Home, where you get to walk around with other avatars in, like, a character action left stick to move your avatar around, and there's others, and you have your chat pad, and you can be, like, say things, and a speech bubble pops up over your head. That'd be cool. I guess that's already pretty much PlayStation Home, but PlayStation Home doesn't have as much avatar stuff, so... It's like, dang it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm distracting Sen with the internet. Right, we are interneting it up. Yeah, unfortunately, we have no, like, real league news this week because they just put out a champ and she continues to be awesome. Got the to Great say, Hunt is going on. Which is possibly the dumbest holiday riot's ever done. So let me get this straight. So... You're you're just going to make sure that there are yorls in the um in the free rotation, okay? Three yordle champs were on sale this week, just like there's normally three yordle champ or three champs on sale every week. Three yordle skins were on sale this week, just like there's always skins on sale every week. And you changed the um the main menu image, which I guess that's a cool thing, I, I suppose. I do like the new music before you jump into the uh, to the client. And you produced one piece of artwork for each of the Ordals hunting a big monster. Uh, okay, it, is that what we're calling a holiday now? Because, like, I, I'm comparing this to the, the Lunar Festival that they did. That was absolutely amazing. Not only did you redo the music at the start of the game to be very cool and Asian-themed, you produced a new skin for five different champions, you ran a contest for art for uh, themed after the, uh, after the holiday. Like, that was a great holiday. Truly awesome. This, not so much. You know, it, this is just kind of an excuse to have a themed sale. Of course. Which, which I'm not behind that at all. Eh, I, I have no objection to it. I mean, maybe it's not as good as other things, but you can't blow out the entire party every time. You gotta have smaller holidays to make the bigger holidays count. Honestly, I feel like the release well, you of... You could have no holidays to make the bigger holidays count. The the release of Surprise Party Fiddlesticks feels like a bigger deal than this. Oh. <laughs> Derp. Pix is currently trying to log into League of Legends using my account and her password. Our Skype connection seems to be breaking up pretty severely. There may be a reason for that. Oh, I had to look at it. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, it's because your Steam is currently trying to update all of your stuff. I have so many games in my Steam library that need patching. Right. I've like I've wanted to play Skyrim for like two months now. I'm like, yeah, I want to go back to Skyrim for a little bit. But I'm like, uh, I need to download two and a half gigabytes worth of patches before I can play. And Steam... I Steam doesn't let you play older versions. It's like, if there's a patch out, you have to patch before you can play. So it's like, right, that's the I guess I just won't of play Steam. any Skyrim. I, I I really want to go back and like play more Reseteer, because I remember really, really liking that game. It was neat. Reseteer is pretty good. It, 
it's just basic fun and cute. It, it's definitely not a serious game by any means, but it, it's fun to run the neighborhood item shop. You should play Fortune Summoners if you ever get the chance, by the way. That's another one that was localized by Carpa Folger. They yep. did they did yeah, Reseteer yeah. and Fortune Summoners. We had talked Fortune about Summoners. this for like at least I, I know I reviewed it, but I'm telling you personally that I, I am personally being told to play this game. Yeah, at some point we also need to play Charles Barkley's Shut Up and Jam Gaiden. Yeah, Paul's gonna be mad if he comes back from deployment and finds we haven't touched I, it. I have that sitting on my computer and just still have not gotten to it. It, it's on my list, but honestly, I've been writing every time I've gotten the chance, so... It's true. You do have stuff to do. Right. And being a, you know, student at all, and all again. It's a little weird. But yeah, um, do we have any reviews coming up that we want to talk about? Like, I, I know we're getting ready for a big rush of games soon. We're all gonna get ready to review Lollipop Chainsaw. When's that again? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pyro, can you look up the date for that? That is the one where the cheerleader's boyfriend's head is cut off by her, I guess, because he was infected with zombie disease. Yep. And then she carries his head around on her belt, and he survives even though he has no body for some reason. While she fights with the angry goth kid in school who unleashed the zombie plague, yes. That is the Suda51 and James Gunn directed game. A Suda51 trip. As right. it's called on the box. Exactly. June 12th. June. Okay, so we've got some time there. I'm trying to think. There were definitely some April releases I was looking forward to. We should look that up. Probably. Somebody is going to see The Hunger Games before next week. Oh, really? I, 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 I might see it. I, I don't want to. <laughs> well, you don't have to. I'm sorry. Pixie if it, might see it if, it if it's based on a, a teen novel, I don't want to see the movie adaptation. Look, I haven't even gotten to go see John Carter yet, and I was legitimately excited about that. I was super excited about John Carter, but in terms of box office sales, that movie has tanked so hard. But honestly, that's a good sign. I'm not sure it's a good sign. I'm not sure a movie with Disney's marketing department behind it not hitting number one in box office at any point, even on its launch weekend um, against nothing in particular. I think that's a bad thing. But Disney sci-fi has traditionally done awful. Oh, <laughs> Tron! Um, did not do fantastically, if I remember correctly. Well, no, if we're talking the original Tron, it did awful. 70% box office rating. No, box office wise. I'm sure I can find that. I I would love it if John Carter was good, but if I we went to see it, for it $3. and it was garbage, I would not be surprised. Right. Considering how bad that has tanked. Well, you gotta remember, the source material isn't exactly what you would call fresh. No, but it's good. I was also disappointed when they changed the name from John Carter of Mars to John Carter. Which gives no hint whatsoever about what the movie's about. They might they might as well have titled the movie Some Dude. Some guy. It was ranked number two the week when it came out. Which for Disney is does a it, massive failure. Does it say against who? I think that bigger indictment is not that it was number two, but that it was number two against like nothing in particular. I don't see, yeah, I don't see anything listing that came out the here. same week, but... Oh, no. here we go. E.T. Oh, it was wow. up against E.T. It, okay, nope, Tron making $5 million the same weekend E.T. came out. All right, nope, that, that's actually So, quality. fuck you very much. I guess, jeez. <laughs> Disney can make money on also, sci-fi. Also, what the hell, Star Trek Two? Really? We're, we're also competing against that and The Thing and Blade Runner? Wow, no. That was a busy weekend. <laughs> that was a really busy... And Mad Max 2? Good lord. <laughs> I wasn't bored when this came out. Oh, Grease 2. There, there's definitely a chance. 
Now, did these all actually come out this week, or is this just everything that was no, in This th- is the weekend of July 19th, 1982. Wow, that was a really busy weekend in theaters, because, like, The Secret of Nim was out that weekend. I have no idea what author author is. Or what Firefox is. A web browser? Well, besides that. Poltergeist was out that weekend. That was in fifth place. I No, Tron was the only thing that came out that week. Uh, we lost connection. Oh, great. I am still connected to the internet. Thanks for asking. Pyro! Hello. Hi! We're back. I'll cut that out. John Carter was number two against the Lorax. Ouch. (laughs) Which was not new that weekend. That was the Lorax's second weekend. So we're actually talking very similar things. E.T. was, or Tron was number two against E.T., which was not new that weekend. Still not new. Wow, E.T. held the box office for a while. Well, I mean, that's not a surprise. E.T. is E.T. E.T. is E.T. Steven Spielberg. Secret of Nim had come out just the week prior, and it was below that. Premiered at number 16. Yeah. So, this is actually really fascinating. Yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by this new site. We are at thenumbers.com. I will probably go see The Hunger Games. And Sen will have to listen to me talk about it, whether he likes it or not. I want to see it, too. I've already heard tons about the book. Because, you know, I want to see it. Right. So, I mean, it's still hung up hung up there at top top four um, following week. Yeah, but it, in no way did it make back its money. That's the thing. Tron's budget was $17 million. Hang on. Find it here. Uh, production budget was, yeah, 17 mil. Um, did not make that back. No. So that is technically a failure. And, you know, it only took them, like, three decades oh, wait, to total produce gross, the sequel. No, total gross. Oh. It made it back eventually, just not that weekend. Within two months. So, yeah, success, I suppose. Financially. It took it three it, week, it, or four um, weeks to hit it. Yeah. The following month, for some reason, it shot right up. Uh, discount theaters. Ah. Uh, so it was, I'll see it, but not for that much. Discount theaters and foreign release. Yeah, that's makes true, Makes for too. huge budgets. That's true, too, and those movies that don't make a whole lot of sense but are really pretty to look at usually right. do well overseas. Um, see Avatar. <laughs> Although that did awesome domestically, too, as I understand it. Mm-hmm. I'm back to sitting on the floor in front of the couch. The couch apparently just never gets used. At the way John Carter has gone really bad, I think my plan for seeing it, because I was really interested in it up front, is to wait till it's on iTunes and then rent it there. That way, when I find out that it sucks, I can stop watching it you can turn 20 it minutes off. in. You know, speaking of, I did do that this week if we want to have a... Uh... A bad cinema moment. What, what were you watching? Um, well, I had gone to rent Street Fighter Cross Tekken for last week's review, and the woman at my uh, choice of, of rental retailer was like, hey, you could have a dollar movie for free with this and get to keep it for just as long. And I'm like... How can I say no to free? I'll play your game. So it took me like ten minutes to browse the... F- the dollar shelf to find what oh thing boy. I wanted to watch for free. And I finally ended up settling on the movie Priest. A PG-13 dystopian future vampire action movie. Rated PG-13. Hey, welcome back. Dang it, Pyro, stop doing whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> nope. Skype, but... buddy, you're breaking my balls. <laughs> so how much of that last thing did you catch? Uh, nothing at all. I heard but... that you got a free movie, and I didn't hear what it was. The so... magic of editing will make this all yeah, seamless. Should, should I redo it, or do you just Ed... want to edit it? Just start redo the it. story over, yep. Okay, so, yeah, because otherwise it'll make a ton of sense to you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, I finally decided on Priest. A oh, 
dystopian apocalyptic future vampire action film that is PG thirteen. Yeah. That sounds like that and could right be a good there bad is movie. Where it died. So, so it was not good bad. It was bad bad. Set bad. designs fantastic. Lead characters acting. It's an action film. What do you want? Makeup special effects. Okay, we're working with it. Uh, this is on track for good bad. Action scenes. Pathetic. Aww. Well, you could tell watching this that they, the original filming of the movie had been intended to be R-rated and that they had to mercilessly cut this thing in order to make it uh, make it PG-13 to the point where the action films lost all coherent sense. So this this action movie is like a porn film that was edited to not be a porn film. It'd be like if just, you were trying to broadcast porn on ABC. Just cutting the sex parts out. Yeah. And then it's like, what is going on? There's this movie it was really bad. <laughs> yep. It it is awful. It is unwatchable. We got to like the first major action scene of the movie and I was like, I I can't do this. I just that went is through disappointing. I went through jump cuts during a fight scene. I didn't think that was a thing. Well, then apparently you've never seen a Michael Bay movie. That's nothing but jump cuts during a fight scene. Right. It it's it's bad. Like you can't even watch Priest as like the joking action movie night. Like we did this with a Jean Claude Van Damme movie the other day, or actually it was a couple weeks ago, and it was awesome. I can't remember which movie we watched, but like my Netflix was confused as to what my tastes were for like the next week. It's like you like eighties action movies, right? Right? No Netflix. No, that that was for a joke. Come check out these Steven Seagal movies. No Netflix. Don't lie, you love 80s action movies. Well, there was that brief stint where you were on a shared account with your mom. No, that's (laughs) still funny, because that still happens. So, like, because I share a Netflix account with my mother, my recommended for you bar is, like, half- Disturbed comedies and violent action movies, and half chick flicks. And Netflix is just going to be like for recommended for That's you, gone away a lately. psychiatrist. No, it was recommending <laughs> the Notebook for me for a while, and I'm like, Netflix, are you sure I'd like this movie? Oh yeah, absolutely sure, guy. But but I watch like No Reservations, and and I watched like um, God, what is the what's the ninjas movie? I can't remember the name of it. The one where the samurai goes to live in the Wild West and, you know, it has the best Jeffrey Rush line ever. Damn. Tom Cruise's The Last Samurai Backwards? Kind of. Kind of. But no, it was just an awesome movie. I just can't remember the name of it. Uh, Way of the Warrior, I think? That might be it. Sounds about right. Right. So, like, yeah, violent action movies and, and Archer, and then it's like, yup. Chick flicks. You need to watch The Notebook and that thing with Keanu Reeves where it is a chick flick with with the, the mailbox. You need to watch that one. And I think it was recommending, like, Meg Ryan movies to me for a while. Like, Netflix really didn't understand me. That one's funny. I realized The Notebook starred Ryan Gosling. I have no idea. <laughs> that, That is eye candy for the ladies. All right, then. So, next week, we'll have a lot more stuff. Hopefully, we'll get to finally finish talking about Mass Effect. And maybe brutal murder. <laughs> and maybe children murder. Forcing children call- to murder other children. Are He's you talking about the Hunger a- Games. Oh, yeah. Derp. I thought he was talking about Corpse Party, because that's apparently a thing. What? That's a game, right? So, yeah. This has been our fine nerd talk for, you know, Wednesday, March 28th, 2012. Uh, hopefully I can get some more time in to play Mass Effect 3 so that we can do our spoiler bonanza. If you have anything you'd like to submit to us, think we should review, think we should talk about, please feel free to message us on our Facebook, Twitter, or we still have those forum things that, you know, are kind of getting a bit dusty. 
Um, we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash nerdtalk. You can follow me on Twitter at nerdtalkpixie. Or you can send us an email to hosts at nerdtalkshow.com. Yup. So in the meantime, this has been Nerd Talk. Also, if you want us to hawk your fine products. <laughs> and totally by hawk, accept- we mean talk about it in only the highest manner. So I'm Sen. I'm Pixie. And I'm Parasim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk.